Hi, Bother Brigade. Here's what's bothering me today. Apparently, in the wake of the uh, leak of the Roe v. Wade draft decision by Justice Alito, a lot of people have understandably been upset, and they have started protesting at several of the justices' homes, most notably Brett Kavanaugh's. And apparently, according to some people, that's just not okay. I say this as someone who is not a conservative and disagrees with Kavanaugh on a whole lot. Harassing someone outside their family's private residence is grotesque. It's not healthy. And it says something that crossing this line is seen by many as virtuous. Demonstrating at people's houses is never okay. Please don't protest at people's homes. Please don't intrude on people attending their houses of worship. Organize politically. Be civil civically. You know, terrible, out-of-touch, peak liberal comments like that. And we want to come back to that last one because, as someone else very dutifully reminded Mr. Crystal, Dr. George Tiller, an abortion provider, was murdered in church in 2009. Many abortion providers do not live in the states in which they work because they fear they and their families will be attacked at home. Give me a break. Yeah, and you know, all this to say, you know, oh, you shouldn't protest in front of people's homes. So like what? Were you against the French Revolution when they literally marched, the women marched to the Palace of Versailles with torches and pitchforks in hand, and they basically demanded the king give some concessions. Was that bad? Was that uncivil? Even though his wife had said that they should eat cake, which in the context of that was the like stuff that was caked on the bottom of their bakery bread oven so it was like this thick charred substance she was like yeah you know well they can eat that who cares about the poor so when you abandon all form of civility in terms of legislation that impacts at least more or less 50 percent of the goddamn country and basically sets the precedent that rights can be overturned and that you don't have full bodily autonomy which is also another different kind of constitutional nightmare in waiting that is itself uncivil. You do not get to talk about civility when someone is legislating your rights away. These are the same people who back during the time of Martin Luther King, they would have said, well, geez, Mr. King, you know, why, why you got to make a big scene about it? You should, you should have like sit-ins or write your congressperson, you know, do it civically. Hand to God, that is legit how these people would act. It's absolutely infuriating. But, there's also another little thing that people maybe aren't aware of, which is that the Supreme Court kind of made this be acceptable. Folk have forgotten the radical SCOTUS ruling in favor of Westboro Baptist Church having the right to picket and protest at funerals using signs that say God hates and God loves dead soldiers. To me, that was harassment, but the justices said it was okay. So, yeah, apparently the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the jackasses at the Westboro Baptist Church. Remember them? And how, you know, well, no, it's their right to be absolute unconscionable douchebags, especially at people's uh, funerals when they're trying to mourn the loss of a loved one and harass gay people and be directly in front of abortion clinics to discourage that oh-so-heinous act. Oh, no, what do you mean now by, by doing that ruling and people could protest outside of residences? What? Now, now we're being protested against? Oh, quick, throw at the civility line. Like, it is so stupid and backwards and insincere. The other thing that's really annoying about this whole situation is that in the wake of this happening, oh, boy, the Senate worked really quickly for once in its goddamn pitiful excuse of a life. This bill just passed the Senate by unanimous consent, sending it to the House. And that's uh, apparently the revelation that senators aim to quickly pass bill to expand security for families of Supreme Court justices per Alizaslav at CNN.com. So all of a sudden, justices get more security, like right then and there, no questions asked. It's entirely unanimous. Hardworking Americans can't get, you know, relief on gas prices. They can't get relief on food prices. They can't get relief for the housing crisis. They can't get relief on anything that matters in this bullshit system that governs America. Gee, I wonder why people are losing faith in the political system and why people aren't really believing in, in terms of like uh, legitimizing things like the Supreme Court and the Democratic establishment when they've done nothing to help very real millions upon millions of Americans who are suffering right now. But to, you know, really focus on this whole issue about, oh, it's never okay to protest. These are the same terrible 
tightwads who back in the day, if they were alive back in the day, would have absolutely shamed Martin Luther King and any civil rights activist for not keeping it civil while incredibly uncivil things were done to them. Notice how that's not part of the conversation, right? All this really shows is that these jackasses like Billy Binion and uh, Mr. Crystal there, they are, and there's so many more like this out there, right? You can find tons of the same kind of argument on Facebook, Twitter, like it's everywhere, right? But it's basically a bunch of people trying to cover their own asses because, oh, geez, what if people found out I did terrible things and then protested in front of my place? I wouldn't like that. And like, hey, you want to know why I don't have protesters in front of my place? One, I'm not a public figure or a public servant who's held accountable to said public that I allegedly claim to represent. And then I am also not a terrible human being. That's why people don't protest in front of, you know, my house or where I work or in front of my friends' houses, or apartments, or whatever, because we're not terrible, awful, shitty human beings. You'd think that would be, you know, not hard to do, but apparently there's thousands of people out there thinking, no, that's actually bad, that should not be allowed. Well, then you should take it up with the Supreme Court. That made this allowable. But the whole argument, right, of, oh, no, it's uncivil, you shouldn't do this, beyond the blatant hypocrisy and silliness and just absurdity of it all, because, um... When uh, the state is uncivil towards you, you have a moral imperative to be uncivil in response. It's kind of like, you know, you don't automatically owe anyone respect. They kind of have to earn it, right? That is getting lost in the sauce of how this whole thing and why people are protesting is because the Supreme Court was preparing to and is likely going to overturn Roe v. Wade, which impacts 50% of the American population. It sets a precedent that rights can be reversed, especially based on who Judge Alito is you know, referencing. It also sets the terrifying precedent that uh, you don't actually have full control or autonomy over your body, which sets new nightmarish precedents in the future with regards to data, genealogy, healthcare. It's all kind of a really big, terrible problem in the making. And that is not part of the conversation. Instead, it's Oh, poor Mr. Kavanaugh and poor Mr. Alito and poor Justice Roberts. This is so bad. People should definitely not be doing this. People's literal rights are under threat. So no, now is not the time for civility. Now is to make like the French and get the torches and pitchforks ready. And the fact that these jackasses think that they're on the right side of history while they are also basically parroting the same lines that anti-civil rights activists were using in the 60s is definitely what's bothering me today.